like anybody that started researching and, and wanting to purchase some type of a, a ice melt spreader, uh, when you start looking at them, you'll see salt spreaders, you'll see 50-50 salt sand spreaders, sand spreaders, wet sand spreaders, and so on. And it's going to be important uh, as I research more and more to know exactly what do they mean. And each one of those really comes down to the fluidity or the flow of the characteristics of the material, a combination of agitation or vibration and all types of things that will make the material move to be able to get it to the spinner to do that. If you push your product farther than it's designed to do, you may end up with a jam up, broken equipment and so on. So I'm going to take you through a few things that we've probably already seen, but we'll notice about uh, how I've come to the mix that I'm doing right now for the spreader I have. First, when we started looking at what do these combinations mean, we're going to be talking about the difference where we may have something like from brown beans or some type of a hard bean that somebody would eat, but it's in a, in a hopper container and can flow pretty easy to what we're used to seeing in an hourglass and seeing the sand flow through to the other side. Uh, but here we're dealing with ice melt products, uh, basically salt and other additives with it and maybe some screenings or sand, but all of these materials that have some type of a flow issue uh, comes down to a few terms that you may have heard before. But one of those terms, if we look at this, actually this is a hopper container that we're going to look at uh, that has a it's HDPE plastic, has a slide gate in the bottom. I lift this up with a tractor to fill my truck. Uh, but let's say that the purple in this graphic is the ice melt product or the, whatever the mix is. So it's just sitting in there. And once it starts moving at the slide gate out of the bottom, uh, normal flow, it'll just kind of start flowing down towards the bottom. Uh, but in some different conditions, depending on everything from the way the material locks together, uh, the way it bonds to the, to the thing beside of it, maybe if it's damp compared to dry, uh, compared to the size, to the size of the hole, uh, damp conditions, humidity, all kinds of other factors. But whatever these factors are, it may come up with a few conditions. So one of those uh, may be what we call the rat hole. Uh, we're going to see that in a little bit when I use an auger drill in some of the screening products that I've got. But the rat hole, it just falls out, but the side walls of the ice melt, whatever material it is, just don't collapse and go down to the hole. Another one is, a, is bridging. Bridging is just like you would see almost in a, in a bridge, in an arch bridge. It just has that adhesion in that arc type fashion uh, that forms like a bridge and it just won't collapse. Another one, which is pretty close, the same thing, but is a dome effect. This, to me, that's just a little bit larger, but it reminds me a lot of like how you would look at a keystone in an arched bridge or doorway of how it just all seems to lock together with the weight and pressure of the material above, and it just bonds pretty well. Uh, another one that we may notice is just clinging. I'm definitely going to see that with my ice melt products. That's pretty normal. I've seen that in the uh, shape and the type of containers that I use is some clinging in the corners. And you'll see that in a few of the video clips. But no matter what the terms are for that, we have to use some type of vibration, agitation, shaking it, whatever it is, to get this material to move. So right now we're going to start looking at some other some material that I use and go through the mixing. And I may appear one of these graphics over it in a little bit just to see the difference in it. Uh, but hope you enjoy this. Here we have some of the super sacks, or the uh, larger, these are normally 2,000 pound bags, but I actually ordered 1,000 pound in the 2,000 pound bags. For whatever reason, it came out cheaper to get two of these than one 2,000 pound bag. Uh, but here we have all the salt in there, the ice melt. Um, you'll see that a little bit of a brown tint with that. That is a little bit of molasses, and we can talk mixes, uh, other additives, and really what is with that salt in just about every product you see out there. But in this one, you can see how with the auger drill, uh, I can stick that in there. And even though there's some crusting on top of this, when it breaks it right up, the salt flows right back into the same space, moves very nicely, and that works well. So if I just put this product into the hopper on the truck, it's going to flow great. If I move over here to this product, which is nothing but uh we could call it sand but it's not really sand this these are screenings uh from the limestone quarry locally uh, if you could take these two products under a microscope and look at 
a grain of sand and a grain of this uh, limestone screenings, the limestone is a lot sharper and it actually does better uh, as a traction aid. So I'm going to mix this in with the ice melt product to give a little bit of traction aid, take up a little bit of the volume. I still want to melt the ice, but I want some instant traction aid down on the ground. Uh, but this stuff has some peculiar behavior that you'll see from the earlier discussions we were having. It has, uh, if I stick my auger drill in, it'll instantly leave walls, almost looking like the rat hole that we described earlier. So if I give a heavy mix of this, in with my ice melt product, it's not going to flow very well at all. In fact, if I just dump this product in the hopper, whether it's a three-point spreader on the back of a tractor, uh, all kinds of different types of hoppers and ice melt spreaders, you're going to have some jamming problems and, and just some issues with it. The drier this material is, the better it is. Uh, if it gets wet, it really gets kind of clumpy and sticks in a way uh, and could also freeze together. But uh, this is actually not that not that damp, uh, but we're going to mix this in the tub in a little bit but and see how we get the right consistency, the right balance of the flow. So in our hopper container, this is what I use to load. Hopefully if I can get a chance, I'll go over there and show the, uh, the bottom of this unit. But there is a slide gate at the bottom. The bottom of this container is actually is a hopper uh, built into the HDPE plastic, which has been awesome. But we can see again, salt flows, takes its path. We get in here, the screenings where I mix some and it will make ridges and pack too easy. So I'm gonna have some trouble with that in the salt spreader because I do have an auger type. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this a little bit. I've already turned it a few times. You can start to see that become partially the screenings and that looks like it's having a pretty good flow with the traction aid in it. Um, so let me stir this up just a little bit more. Uh, this is just a cheap old auger drill off of Amazon. <laughs> uh, I daydreamed of several more types of mixing this stuff together, but this was like 20 buck option on a drill. So I just gotta prepare some material ahead of time store it that way and we'll be okay but just that little bit of mixing kept turning this into a flowable material I'll keep turning it up and you'll see a little bit more of the screenings get on it but this is going to give some ice melt capability to a road uh, but also some instant traction aid along with that on top of ice so kind of looking forward to that wrap it up if you go back to your uh, maybe spread that you're intending to buy or the one that you've already bought and it says that it's a 50 50 salt sand mixer that doesn't just mean half and half you're going to really need to kind of experiment with the material you use mix it in a small batch just to see how it feels test it in your spreader waste a little bit just to try it out because you really don't want to do this when it's time and you've, you've got to really get on the road and get things done so pay attention to it and just look at the specs come up with your mix and uh, play ahead of time hope you have a good winter